We don't want to do this in the public, right? Is the United States considering pulling from its own stocks to send to Ukraine without replenishing them? Or is the aid package that we expect to come in the next week or so the final one until Congress gives the United States more authority? I mean, look, we've been very clear. There's one more, one more final, uh, final aid that we can give to Ukraine. If, and, and if the United States doesn't replenish its own stocks. Look, what I can tell you is we're doing one of the reasons why we ask for additional aid uh, is because um, because we're running out, right? We are running out of aid to support the brave people of Ukraine. And we have what we've been able to do, and you've heard this from the Admiral, we've heard this from the National Security Advisors, we have kind of lessened, like made those, that aid that we've announced at the last couple of weeks or last couple of months smaller and smaller because we don't have any more. Like, this is it. Tragic. I understand you don't want to negotiate from the podium, but can you tell the American people if there's any immigration policy that this White House is willing to talk about and, and is working on with Republicans? So I want to be really careful as negotiations happen. We don't want to do this in the public, right? It does not help the process. Uh, and so we want to make sure that those negotiations are happening. Obviously, we're part of those negotiations with, uh, with, the, with the senators. We think it's going in the right direction. You started talking about um, accomplishments from this last year. Uh, you talked about the economy. But in our latest ABC News poll back in November, by a 10-point margin, Americans still said that they would trust Republicans on the economy more. So what is your message to Americans who just think what you've done on the economy is not enough? Look, we understand what Americans have gone through. We do. Uh, they went through, and you've heard me say this many times before, and my other colleagues, uh, coming out of the pandemic was a tough time, a difficult time for so many Americans. And we understand it's going to take some time for them to feel the accomplishments and what we've been able to do in the last three years. He does every, he, we, we make an effort uh, to do a press conference as often as possible, whether it's here at home or uh, abroad. Pure fiction. And what we're seeing here at the border, the migration flow, uh, increased migration flow, certainly uh, it, it, you know, it ebbs and flows. How successful would you say the administration's efforts to stem root flow, to get to the root causes of migration? We believe that uh, we've done a good job working with uh, our partners in the region to try to get at some of the root causes, including political instability uh, and crime. There was a, a general de decline in some of the, the, the migrant flows. Again, not, not perfect, not saying that it was down to a level that was comfortable for anybody, but there had been a decline. Another thing is these crowds here in Eagle Pass have never been this large during my reporting. This is the most people I've ever seen in Eagle Pass and other reporters, colleagues working other parts of the border <laughs> in Arizona, in Hakumba, near San Diego, tell me the same thing. We have these conversations and the conversation is always, well, I've never seen this number of migrants arriving. And we know from the reports coming from the government with these numbers. So we have the number of apprehensions, the number of encounters, everything is spiking. So we, we don't know what this will mean moving forward. We just know that the numbers are much larger. Some illegal border crossers are being given court dates in 2031. What are they supposed to do here for seven years? Again, that's a better question put to uh, the DHS. I'm not in a position to, to talk about specific cases like that. I see you next year. I hope not. We don't want to do this in the public, right?